Welcome once again to another edition of the Sports Agenda here on Alliance Plus TV. And this is the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, which we are in butter trade with. And they've given us this lovely place to be doing interview with the sporting legends. Today, we have a power, power lifter in the house and an arm wrestler. Somebody who has seen it all done and understands what all these disciplines means to the person. I'm going for a quick break. When I come back, I'll mention the person's name and then we zoom straight into action. My name is Cecil Nita Kutego. Welcome back. You still looked up on the sports agenda with me, Cecil Nintel Kotego, and I have on the hot seat no other person than Tahiru Aruna, who happens to be a para power lifter and also an arm wrestler. We'll just be taking him on his career and how he got into sports and how far with his preparations. Because look, we have so many daunting tasks ahead of him, and then he will tell us more about that. Good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Tyro Aruna. Yeah. I mean, it's always a pleasure whenever I'm interviewing people in terms of the lesser known sports or least finance sports. You are a power, power lifter uh, and an arm, arm wrestler. wrestler. Yeah. How did you get into sports? Yeah. Tahiru? Thank you for asking me this question. Yeah. At first, I was a businessman at Circle. Okay. I used to be selling phones and helping people to get a better phones in town. So I was there and they were advertising arm wrestling show, national trials for African championship. And the manager called me and said, oh, Haruna, you are, you are really a strong guy. I want you to try this sport and see, and let's see what happened. So it got to the day for the national trials and I went there and I participated. So as I got there, I thought I was going to battle with a, a disabled body. Not to me, I have to battle with the able body. So I have to battle with them and I battled and I came third. The national trials. That's your first trial? Yeah, that's my first trial. Yeah. I came. So they selected me in the national team. So we went for campaign, we we're training every day. So and the trial too came and I have to battle an able uh, this one, powerlifter. Okay. That was the person who called Niyama. Mm -hmm. So I battled with him and I won him okay. through that trials. So I was there and the barista was saying, oh, so that, does it mean you have to battle with the able body? And one of our referee, head referee, and he's in uh, this one, Egypt. Okay. He told me, he told barista, no, he can battle for the able and disabled. Oh, okay. He said, cool, then that, 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 that's a great thing. So he, too, he motivated me to push more. Okay. So that's the time we went to Nigeria, my first time into an international competition in Africa. We went to Lagos, Sulere, went to participate. My first day I had gold medal, that's the left hand. Then the second day I had a uh, gold medal. Then the able body, I have to participate and I came forth. Okay. Both left and right, I okay. came forth. Okay. And still on when we started battling and we came back home to train more. Okay, now you are a power power lifter. Yeah. I mean, how did you get into that too as well? Because um, we all know you to be an arm wrestler. My yeah. first time I, w I I I saw you was when you came back from Egypt with your medals and you presented it at that's the GOC right. office. Yeah, that's Nigeria. Yes, I I saw you there. So it's like ah, this guy is an arm wrestler. Now he's a power power lifter. How <coughs> come you just entered into power yeah. power lifting? So I got into a power uh, power lifting through like a lot of people convinced me 
uh, that was my coach. At first, he, he was the former weightlifter, then our sec secretary general, Peter G. Okay. So at that time, it was only one person participating, only one, two people participating. So they always convinced me, oh, join, I should join, I'm really strong, I should join. They said, no, I have to ask permission from my federation first yes. okay. before I can join on board. Okay. So I asked my president, Charles OCCB, the president of Ghana Arm Wrestling Federation. I asked him, say, oh, why not? I can join. And I, I asked our, our general secretary too in arm wrestling, Hussein. At the same time, he's a referee too. Yeah. He said, Hussein oh, Akwetadi. Yeah, I can join power powerlifting. It's the same thing. I can combine the two and train. So, and Peter came back and told me that, oh, and then if you are ready, Prince Morgan, that's our coach. He's going to train you. Okay. So at that time, I was not able to even to lift 50 kg. Mm. So he asked me, "Ti da ben, ti be ye." Mm. So that's the word always I put inside my head. E be ye, da ben. Mm. So and I joined. So my first time, we we have to go for competition in uh, Algeria, okay. but it couldn't happen because of the Hajj. So okay. they postponed it back. When our first competition was in Lagos to in Victoria Island. Okay. That's the first time participating for para powerlifting. Like it didn't reach even a year. So okay. we have to go and participate that place too. I went and I placed third. Okay. And that was the first medal I had for para powerlifting. That's the first medal para powerlifting to had for more than I think twenty years. Wow. I had that medal. So through that I have to combine the two sports then go with it i mean let's you you've, you've elaborated much from how you started from a businessman now you're a sports person how difficulty do you can you combine even when you were at circle and you were doing this you were still living on the benevolence of whatever you do outside as tnt towards you even taking part in training who helps you who who, who has been the sole financier who motivates you is it friends is it family who is the person who says look haruna you can do it go for it and it's the gold yeah at first it was my family members who helped me dream it like as i joined the sports my said, oh i'll go for a training i have to train for arm wrestling then power power lift when i come to the shop i'll, I'll be sleeping okay they said no after training you have to go house that's okay. So who is going to help me in terms of my TNT? He said he is going to help me out. It's okay. But I know that you can't be asking him every day about yeah. TNT. Sometimes I have to beg my friends to, oh, this week is not good for me. Can you please help me out? And they will give me, my coach too sometimes will give me. And Peter J, when he's there, he's passing through, he sees you, he'll give you money. And so manage. Let's manage because I'm not the only person. He yeah. also gives the rest of my colleague and also CB too when he's passing by and he sees you training, then say, Oh boys, take this small and share. Oh, okay. Better things will come ahead. So it's true, let's say friends and family helps. Okay. But it's very difficult. But sometimes too, you also have to do small business then back up. Okay. Through your transportation. But transportation in and out coming every day is not easy. Okay. How <coughs> how how do you ease like um let's say do you get per dms when you go for i think um competitions per what you even said for the first time proper lifting even getting bronze from uh, from an international competition was there anything like a per diem that can sustain you guys whenever you need it you can just take money take this or do that no there's no any per diem because i'll quite say my first time going to powerlifting competition we came back, I, mean, I thought there would be a journalist or let's say people coming around to interview how was the competition, so so and so so and so. We came there, even not even one person from the uh, ministries to welcome us. Okay. None. We came and we went back mm -hmm. with nothing. But still, because we had hope with the sports, but still training. <laughs> the, the, the government didn't come on board. We don't, we, I mean, I don't know anything about per diem. Okay. Since I started the sports. I don't know anything about PDM. Now there's this initiative from YEA. I mean, helping to stimulus some of the athletes, help them at the end of every month. Maybe they get a token to go home. People who are willing to die for Mother Ghana. What can you say about that? Yeah, YEA actually help athletes with that money 
we are going to give for the athletes is very helpful because okay. some of the athletes it's very difficult for them to even come for training okay so let's say when that money comes on board mm -hmm. like they'll be they'll be coming in their numbers to train that money is going to help them a lot okay. during that period of time even i hope they will extend it more oh, okay. so that more people will come on board if only they keep on helping because if they help to let's say before olympic games they gonna have more athletes to come on board because sometimes our problem is our tnt the supplements okay even though the the money they are going to give us is not enough but we appreciate and we will manage it okay yeah. how are you <coughs> open to anybody who is willing to sponsor you i mean come what may any corporate organization who is willing to sponsor you guys in terms of your supplement in terms of your tnt in terms of all those things that's really i mean doesn't push you to hit that limelight yeah we are open and i'm also open but they are not coming okay if they come we will welcome them warmly but they are not coming all their focus is on football meanwhile we we also can exhibit and do more because watching the billboard like people advertising products you also can't do it yeah. can do it for them and to be a nice way okay yeah we, we are work we will work on them when they come we will work on them i mean bef before we go for this particular <coughs> break um what do you aspire do you think there is something that you need to achieve as a power power lifter or as an arm wrestler yeah as a power power lifter i also want to break african record and world record and I'm wrestler too. I also want to get a title in para, in the para side at the same time at the Ebo side. That's my target I want to get now. What are some of the preparations you are doing towards that? Yeah, I've started the preparations since after the president lifted the ban on our sports. Yeah. And I've started it, but it's quite difficult. You know, right now, jobs are not moving well. So when you try to ask money from people, say oh, it's not good. But we are managing. Okay. I'm always training. Always training. Even if today is my off day from not going for gym at home, I do my push-ups, dips to keep fit for the next day. Okay. I mean, um, this is where I would like to say that um, look, we like to go for a quick break, but let's acknowledge <coughs> where we are now. We are the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. That is on the 28th February Road, and it's opposite the old Parliament House. And I'm here on the sports agenda with Haruna Tahiru. He is aspiring to break a world record in power power lifting and also in arm wrestling, whether disabled or able. When we come back from the break, we will enter into how COVID has treated him. Let's go for a quick break. Welcome back from the break. You still here on the sports agenda, boom, of all sports. And today we are with Tairu Aruna, happens to be a power power lifter and also an arm wrestler. He has told us more about how he entered into sports and from business to the sporting frame. Now we take a look at his training schedules and how life is treating him even around COVID. Now Tairu, I mean we've we've sat home for a long time before this our president came on board. To tell us that um, the non-contact sports yes. now can Trains. can start training. How has COVID treated you? I mean, when you were home, it's like you were eating and sleeping. So it has actually made you rather improve upon, or you have more weight added to yourself. Now you have to shed weight and train more. Yeah, 
the COVID-19, uh, this pandemic has really affected <laughs> us a lot. <laughs> it's not easy. It has really affected us a lot. Because when you, we were in, in our various, various houses, what we have to do is push-ups, dips, push-ups, dips. But that one too is not going to help us. Okay. It's not good because the government too didn't help us. Because I quite remember, the only thing we had was our, let's say, they will come on board and give us food substance and we go back to our house but that 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 is not what we want let's say if each person you know that this person is has the chance to go into olympic games or paralympic games you have to equip the person give the person special treatment for him to train more to enhance then me ask my body weight and I, I don't have to reduce my body weight category i have to go more okay because i'm in a, a heavy weight super heavy weight okay. so i have to train more then eat. Okay. Eat more. I don't have to reduce my body weight. But the pandemic has really worried a lot, like all the athletes in Ghana. Okay. Now you've you've <coughs> been to I mean several places whereby you have the um, you have the edge to be training or using certain facilities. How do you compare those places? I mean you've been to Iran and you've yeah. seen what it would I mean what is there? How, how do you compare your training regime in Iran to how it's been run in Ghana? Yeah, Iran training is far better, 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 more than Ghana. Because Iran, immediately you train, you go back to your room, then you come back. Because Iran, let's say the Iranians, they know what they want. Okay. That's why they have champions. Let's say when they say they're having a games like, let's say six months ahead, they are going to come their athletes to the competition day, and they'll be sleeping at the sports complex. Everything is for them like from training inside inside to training so they train as I went there I train six times in a week wow I only don't train on Fridays because they because of their prayers okay they don't train on Fridays right. so I, I train Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Saturday Sunday I always train only Fridays I don't train because okay. at that place I was also making records at that place too okay because of their equipment they have better equipment more than we because all what our government know to waste their money on football was the lesser known sports are the ones raising the flag high yeah that's what i always tell my friends even a lot of people want to quit in their sports at the at the gym today some of them were saying after olympics i'm going to stop because there's nothing better coming out of this sports because he can't wait till 2023 because he's also growing up there yeah. He can't waste his time in, into this sport. He has to go and better his life. Because if the government don't come on board, uh, on board as soon as possible, he's going to lose like champions and legend in the game. Because 2023, Ghana is hosting. It's not going to be easy. Because the government needs to come on board as soon as possible. Have you had any calls from whether your federation be it the Power Powerlifting Association or Ghana Arm Wrestling Federation whereby they are now trying to camp you guys not maybe for the Olympics but after the Olympics 2023 Ghana is hosting the African Games here. We have a very good edifice at the Trust Emporium. Has your um, association or federation gone to liaise with the uh, trust emporium people that maybe you can use their gymnasium whenever you have to train or the, because they have got better equipment over there whereby you can train more and then I mean it will take you to better heights for now they didn't tell us anything about them we do for arm wrestling I don't hear from them what we know our captain always tell us train 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 because arm wrestling is a contact sport okay. okay we are not allowed to train for arm wrestling okay but powerlifting you have to train every day like but because of our financial issue we've reduced it from at first we train four times in a week but right now we reduce it to three times in a week we train monday wednesday and friday okay then we come back on monday again okay but we don't have anything about going to here and but all, what we are waiting for is the borders to be open so that we will go out to camp okay to get better Improvement. Have you heard from your association in terms of <coughs> camping? Um, has something c uh, crop up on the radar that maybe after the lifting of the borders whereby people can now travel, do you have 
as your association earmarked a certain country whereby the uh, weightlifters will go there and then camp themselves for the para olympic games or even the olympic games proper. yeah the, the when our leaders spoke to like peter j say we are going to camp in uk okay before other competitions then olympic games we go for qualifiers and things yeah he spoke about that but we are just waiting to see yeah. But um, how best are you in the best of shapes when it comes to maybe leaving the nation and then going to UK for this camping tour? Yeah, it's good because we are also going to get an exposure to train outside and learn other techniques and get more experience okay. so to add to your own and the weather condition to also help. But here, let's say, yeah, the weather is very hot mm -hmm. and that place is cold. A cold place when lifting is very hard and difficult the weight becomes heavy but here the weight becomes light that's the difference okay. so when you train there for several years when you come down you become good oh, okay now do you have a saddest day in terms of you doing sports i mean a day that you even told yourself i regret i even entered into sports do you have any of the days yeah like i that? do have I do have Can my. Can you just share that experience? Yeah, I this? do have my saddest day. My saddest day was that, like, when I sit down, think I, I don't have money to buy something. I just say, when I was at Circle doing my business, no one gave me money. I myself remove my money. I save. I can buy everything I want. Okay. But now, when you want to buy even something, you have to beg for it. It's it's really painful okay. when doing that. Sometimes I feel like even quitting like the game and go back to my business. But still my coach Peter J and Charles says to be still motivating that a better day will come. I have to still be in the game. So okay, I will still manage. I mean most of your <laughs> friends at Circle, how do they see you? Whenever you go around, how do they see you? Do they still I mean see the same Tai Raruna guy they knew of yesteryear who is who has been the businessman and today he's knocking on the heights of Proper lifting all over Africa and in the world. <laughs> when I circle, if I reach as if I'm their president, <laughs> everybody will be shouting, Champion, award number one. Even though I've not set the record, but they have a zeal and a fame. They, they know that I can do. They know what I can do. Okay. So that's why they always believe in me. Okay. So that's why I also don't want to disappoint them. I always train more to prove my enemies than people who say I can't do it. Prove them wrong. What do you have? What feeling do you get? What are the, some of the nostalgia whenever you win and then they are about to put the um, gold around your neck or even when you hear the national anthem? Uh, now I feel like like I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel proud. Yeah. Like I feel proud. Like I don't know what to say. I, f I really feel proud. Like is that me raising the flag of Ghana? I, f I really feel proud. I mean. Have you spoken to some of um, some some of the guys who are uh, who have disabilities and are on the road begging and all doing all? Have you maybe encountered one on one, or have you spoken to some of them? Maybe you feel, look, this person has the capabilities of even playing table tennis for Ghana. This guy has the capabilities of playing basketball, even in a wheelchair. Have you spoken to any of them to maybe take them out of wherever they are? Yeah, I do, I do, I do talk to a lot. Sometimes even when I'm in the car going, I just have to draw from the trotro and go there and just get at them and talk to them and say this what they are doing is going to help them in the future begging you can't beg forever yeah. so join me or come i'll show you other disciplines where you are good you go to, to that place they told me that i'm not going to pay them i said no i myself i'm not going to pay yeah. i also struggle to get with what i want so right now what you have to do right now is come train to better your future begging won't give you won't take you to your peak mm -hmm. but still they say even if they are begging their worst day if they don't have money is 2.5 or 1.5 <laughs> so you can't force them yes yeah, true if the government like has been helping the disability and they are seeing it they won't be begging yeah but the government focuses on the able body Mm -hmm. and it's really bad the focus needs to go to the disability side because okay. they need help they don't work they don't work 
me like this. After training, I have to go home and go and sleep. I don't yeah. work. Yeah. Then I have to hustle. Start, oh, boss will give me 20 grand tomorrow. I'm going to training. Boss will cook for me. Oh. And I say, okay, take. That's what we do. But if the government come on board, hey, these people, every month, be a, there's a, a provisions for them, money for them, or let's say you organize bars for them, or maybe you can buy moto for them, for ties to be going for training in and out. It will help. Because yeah. I quite remember, as we went to UK, some of them were using their own bikes. Government bought it for them. Wow. So going to training is very easy, easy. for them. You can buy 10 series then for your motor. You can use 3 to 4 days. You go and come, come house. But you, we want the athlete to use his money for TNT. Then later athletes go to for games. Then you reduce the money. You bring the money small. Then how will the money reach the athletes? Wow. How well do you believe that, um, well, what is the push that you need from Ghanaians to make Tyru's dream of breaking a world record? setting a new world record or an african record come to reality yeah there's a lot me and i i also need the government to come on board to help the disability and me when athletes has peace of mind he doesn't have financial he or she doesn't have financial problem gets the right equipment for training you will read the peak what do you want our Daniel. training facility okay it needs to modify they need to like make it nice and bring the right equipment for training buying the athlete supplements on time their feeding and their tnt is very important because most of the athletes when they are coming what they are thinking is about their tnt for tomorrow and when they when they started training and they will lose concentration or focus on their training it happens a lot even today some of us almost heard this about oh what's wrong you say but i'm thinking about tomorrow what what will i eat how will i come to train and i tell the person just believe god will provide even when i'm even tired of telling them god will provide i'm even tired <laughs> it's, it seems as if you had a motivational speaker so sometimes you need to yeah I, I always talk to them i always tell them that the game is not easy the game is not easy i always tell them that suffer now the enjoying competition wow that's what I always tell them i mean before we we wrap up from <coughs> wherever we are and then um, whatever you're going through we want you to acknowledge friends i mean family members people who have been enforcer in your life where you came from and today where you are you've traveled far and wide all because of sports what can you tell some of the people friends relatives people who have done well in your life and then has constituted you to be a champion in whatever you are doing be it arm wrestling be it power power lifting yeah i would like to tell them that they should keep on more motivating me encouraging me even though if they don't have they should talk to me in a nice way or motivate me uh, moreover to i want to tell them that if they have a disability person in their family or they know anybody anybody around them is a disability person they shouldn't treat the person as trash because they don't know what the person may might might become in future because if they if the person is a disability person that means that the person can't do anything the person has a unique talent but he or she needs somebody to bring it out so if they have a disability person they need to train the person hard even let's more let's talk in schools when I was in school, they didn't want me to be participating in sports. They said, disability person, no, you can't do it, you can't do that, you can't do it. But it's a bad thing. They also need to what? Add them. Even if they are doing volleyball, let all of them sit down. Even if it's because of one disability person, let them sit down, play the sitting volleyball. If it's go ball, let them, blind, everybody blindfold himself, play go ball. That is going to motivate the disability people. But sometimes when you go to school, you see the disability people sitting down, like they remove them, like they are not, they, they are not they, part they are not of the am, amongst the able body. Yeah, and it's really bad. It's really bad. So all I need is some of the schools, let's almost all the schools need to respect disability person. It's very bad because some of them even try to kill themselves because they remove them out of people. People. Yeah. And it's very bad. Oh, okay. 
I mean, um, what would you like to say to your president and then um, to the Ghana Wrestling Power Power I, I, I would like to thank Samson Dean, Peter AJ, the General Secretary of MPC. I would like to thank the president of uh, Ghana Power Power Lifting and Arm Wrestling, that's Charles ACB, something. Then I have to thank them to keep on pushing we, to motivate we. We know that it's not easy, but we, if they are not there, we are not also there. We need them to come on board. They shouldn't lose hope on us. We believe in them and they also believe in we. I always like to pray, I always pray for them. I know that the battle is not easy. Was has to be a president going up and down, seeking for sponsorships for the tournament, going to governments, governments tossing up and down. It's very bad. But they should keep on believing in me. We also pray for them. Okay, I also thank Abdullah Usman and Masaudu Usman, uh, that be Abiyama's Forest Bureau, then Abiyama's phone shop. I'd like to thank them very much. They've been my day, number one day supporters each and every day, in and out, helping me progressing in my sports day in and day out. I'd like to thank them very much. I'd like to thank them very much. May Allah always bless them. May Allah <coughs> always bless them and this is coming from Haruna Tairu who happens to be a power power lifter and also an arm wrestler. He said all that I'm focused on is to break a world record and an African record and Isha Allah it will come to pass. That is what he said and definitely that is his earmark. We would like to say a very good, uh, very big thank you to Tahiru when we called on him. He, he came and then he granted us this particular interview. Everybody who has been helping with Tahiru's to and fro, going and coming, we say a very big thank you to you. And also, this is the Sports Agenda. Watch and subscribe to Alliance Plus TV on your YouTube channel and like us also on our Facebook page Alliance Plus TV. We always set the ball rolling and set the pace for others to follow. We will never give you something that you don't want until we come your way with another edition of the Sports Agenda. My name still remains Cecil Nita Kotego. Al Fidesin Shishay Taijin. Goodbye.